in uh, the UK, there's approximately 7 million tons of food that is wasted every Christmas. Uh, 2 million turkeys are consumed, 5 million Christmas puddings, and 74 million mince pies get thrown away. This is discarded. Hello, very good evening and welcome to Chitra Media. I'm your host, Sharan Sethi. We are joined by Rami Desaiji today. Rami ji, namaste and welcome to Chitra Media again. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Hello, Ashka, Sharan. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very well, thank you. Uh, first of all, you've been researching about uh, the side effects of the festivals that we celebrate. And Christmas, of course, is celebrated all over the world, uh, by the, not just by the Christian community, but others too. And New Year's has, of course, has become some sort of a, a lifestyle, should I say, for the millennials uh, to celebrate off late. And what are the costs of celebrating such festivals, which we are not uh, aware of? Uh, Sharon, uh, you know, when we think of festivals like uh, Christmas and uh, New Year's, you know, these festivals have become bigger than life because they're celebrated world over. It's not uh, any longer limited to just one religion or it's not just a religious event. If you look at Christmas in India, school celebrated, mall celebrated, little kids like to have Christmas parties. So, of course, there's a huge amount of consumption that takes place. Now, unfortunately, in India, even though we have a really large population and we have a population that indulges in these two events with a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, for example, New Year's is really big in India, you know, and it's even bigger in the hotspots of New Year's like Goa or uh, other cities like this. Uh, yeah, same with Christmas. We don't have a lot of data because uh, maybe uh, this is something that uh, the same segment that looks at Diwali doesn't want to really face the numbers that crop up in these events. So let me give you an example. And, you know, let me say this at the outset that uh, I, I am a great believer in festivals and I think uh, festivals should be celebrated. Yeah. And, you know, they bring families together and, you know, there's a lot of happiness, togetherness. But um, there is an element of excessive consumption, especially in worldwide festivals like Christmas or New Year's. So let me give you some um, examples from, let's say, the statistics that we have from the United Kingdom and uh, the US. You know, in uh, the UK, there's approximately 7 million tons of food that is wasted every Christmas. Um, 2 million turkeys are consumed, 5 million Christmas puddings, and 74 million mince pies get thrown away. This is discarded. Can you imagine this kind of wastage of food? Uh, uh, you know, this almost brings us to about 270,000 tons of food waste that yeah. is uh, accumulated during this time. And food More, waste is, of course, especially because UK faces such a big issue with uh, you know uh, homeless people and their inadequacy of uh, managing to obtain food properly on time. You're, you're quite right. Uh, uh, I've studied in uh, the country, and I know that uh, uh, the kind of homelessness that they have uh, is very heartbreaking because one imagines that in a as they call themselves first world you know, in a first world country, there would not be this kind of poverty and homelessness and, you know, right. lack of food. Um, but uh, I do find that uh, sometimes, you know, in the West, um, these things are overlooked more than they would be overlooked in a country like ours. Right. But having said that, food is not the only wastage. You know, food, of course, is very sad that that kind of food is wasted and there isn't any sort of system where this food can be further consumed or donated. But, um, you know, the uh, the waste of uh, 
uh, the extra waste that is created from, let's say, decorations or electronic items or uh, something as simple as uh, aluminum foils or wrapping paper is astonishing. And this is just the UK. Um, to give you an example of the volume, because I rather found it sh shocking. Um, people feel that when, you know, when they look at India and they look at our population that, you know, there must be a lot of uh, environmental issues here. There must be a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, people are probably not as concerned about uh, environmental issues. But, you know, if you look at the statistics there, it's astonishing that they could be virtually signaling anybody else. So the general waste that, uh, you know, uh, goes up every year after Christmas uh, is... Uh, Three million tons of food. Yeah, three million tons. Uh, food is about ten billion pounds of food. Uh, aluminium foil is about four thousand two hundred tons of aluminium foil. Um, you know, let me also bring in uh, things like plastic bottles. Um, Seven hundred and fifty million bottles. Uh, Christmas trees, 8 million Christmas trees are, you know, consumed and like, you know, thrown away. Wrapping paper, 83 square kilometers of wrapping paper. Um, then you look at all the other things that go into it, like Christmas cards, clothes. Um, you know, there's a consumption of a billion Christmas cards. Right. You know, so these are staggering, staggering amounts of... Uh, uh, waste that is uh, uh, has been uh, sort of statistically now put together, but it's right. staggering that uh, these are countries that virtue signal us, but this is the kind of waste that they have. You know, uh, thirty-five million bottles of wine, twenty two hundred and fifty million pints of lager. So it's not very healthy either. Yeah, yeah. And even candles have become a big issue, uh, is what I've heard, right? Because it's used on multiple occasions and not just on Christmas. And that also happens a lot. Uh, and I, I think 1879, December, uh, if I'm not mistaken, back then, I mean, we are talking about pollution today and the youth are getting more acclimatized to climate change in the sense that they're aware of the perils of it. But uh, nearly 200 years before, London was so dense and dark that you couldn't see anything because of the pollution due to Christmas. So we can only imagine what it is today. But I think we just get carried away at the moment and uh, it's not a very popular thing to also speak about, right? Because it's such a beautiful festival and then uh, we conveniently ignore so many facts that uh, uh, you rightly brought up. No, of course, um, uh, like you mentioned about pollution, even New Year's, it is a time of such high consumption, movement, travel. Um, also, we have firecrackers through that period as well. Firecrackers is not limited to Diwali. You have firecrackers over Christmas, you have firecrackers over New Year's, you have firecrackers, you know, post that. You have, and this is also the wedding season, you know, December, January also becomes uh, November, starting November becomes wedding season. So, uh, 2017, 2018, it was calculated in Delhi and all of India that the AQI post New Year's was uh, as good or as bad as uh, the week after Diwali, you know. So, as far as I am concerned, you know, these are all, you know, festivals are times of consumption. It has to be mindful consumption. It cannot be excessive consumption. I mean, I haven't even told you the statistics for the US, which is US and Australia, which is, this was only the UK, right. which is even more astonishing. Uh, but uh, to, to talk about uh, climate impact, to talk about pollution, to talk about the environmental impact only from the lens of looking at one festival is not fair you know if you were to compare it to any of these other modern day celebrations like i said new year's as well it would be the same right and uh, 
So what is the alternative in the sense that uh, a lot of Hindus and Indians today are growing very conscious about not bursting firecrackers. So we are consciously using diyas. Uh, so for Christmas, what are the options that we can do? Well, uh, you know, I think uh, one of the huge points of debate is using Christmas trees. Um, Christmas trees have their own impact on uh, the environment. So uh, a lot of Christmas trees have farms where they are specifically grown so that they can be sold over this period. This also puts other uh, other species, other species of uh, trees, fir trees at risk because people are only farming these trees. Secondly, you're cutting them, you're using them for a day and you're throwing them away. It takes about six, seven years for these trees to grow. Uh, you can find alternative uh, measures to using, you know, instead of using real trees. But those alternative measures that we've seen in the US, in India, in the UK, in Australia, all over the world, have now become plastic. So you have a lot of these plastic uh, trees, you know, which uh, are not necessarily recycled. So they are, and they are also produced in China, Taiwan, South Korea. Um, these are not really appropriate to use at this juncture of uh, civilization. I think one has to be really, really careful of what you're using because that's probably the most highest uh, consumed item is Christmas trees. Um, also Christmas cards. You can always send e-cards if, you know, there are billions and billions of cards being sent around. Um, can you imagine the wastage of paper? Um, the, you can use recycled paper. But then again, there are things like wrapping paper. There are things like aluminum foil. There are things like gifting of electronic items during these periods, which has become absolutely the favorite thing to gift. So everybody is gifting, you know, either they're gifting their kids electronic toys or they're gifting each other mobile phones. Now, this creates, makes a part of a waste that cannot be recycled and is really, really harmful for the environment. Uh, you must also understand that we have a problem of illegal dumping. Even though the statistics that are available are only available for these Western countries where uh, Christmas is associated to, um, the fact remains, apart from the fact that India also celebrates it as a, at a large scale, that these countries are dumping their uh, waste in developing countries. A lot of it is in Africa, a lot of it is in Asia, a lot of it is illegal dumping. Interpol says that one out of three cargo containers is illegal waste. Um, these are leftovers of batteries, metal, you know, these leak into water. Um, so there is uh, multiple levels of damage that uh, this kind of consumerism is doing, which can completely be avoided. Um, right. You know, uh, just to go into the minute detail of it, um, Greenpeace, which is, you know, I have my issues with Greenpeace, but having said that, um, one of the studies that they did recently found that as little as one kilogram of wrapping paper emits three and a half kilograms of CO2 during its production per, uh, process. You see, when we talk about what the consumption is, we are only talking about buying and using it. We are not talking about the production process, which itself has its own carbon footprint. So, um, you know, this and and w this example that I'm giving you does not in take into account further packaging and transportation of, you know, the same. So these are, hu you know, these are hugely damaging uh, uh, consumable items to use. Right. Well, one can only hope that uh, our younger generations are growing more conscious and they'll take cognizance of what are the costs of celebrating these festivals in a particular manner and will adopt much more eco-friendly measures. Uh, so let's see how that goes and hopefully this message will uh, go viral across to a lot of our viewers. Thank you so much. It was very interesting having this discussion with you. And uh, of course, it's not a very popular thing to say, especially ahead of uh, uh, Christmas and New Year's Eve, because everybody seems to be uh, in the mood for it. But I think that is at the crux of the matter, right? While we are 
completely independent and we have the freedom to celebrate whatever festival and whatever religion we ascribe to at the end of the day we also have certain concerns that affect us as a human race and that is what we need to be cognizant about thank you so much uh, for dealing this issue with such sensitivity uh, by giving us all the statistics that concern uh, all of our brothers and sisters across the world as a human race Thank you, Sharon. That was very short, very sweet. And thank you. Very, and, uh, happy again. Christmas and Happy New Year again to all our viewers. Yeah. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content, and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Thank you. Namaskar.